Welcome to the Wonders of Watercolour where this week we will be painting this gorgeous orange using the wet and wet technique, wet and dry technique for those finer details as well as covering things like watercolour glazing so that you can create a beautiful watercolour painting like this and we even provide you with a free reference photograph to trace down so let's get started with the first wash. Thank you for joining me here today on the Wonders of Watercolour. Now you can see I've already done my outline like this and I'll provide you with a free version of this right at the end of this video so you can pause the screen and you can print it out that way. But if you want this free traceable, all you need to do is join my Patreon and you can print out the downloadable PDF that way. It's completely free and there isn't any obligation to join us on the full versions there. So I'll put the link to that in the description box underneath this video. Let's talk about the materials that I'm using today, but of course use whatever you have, but in case you want to use the same colours as me, I'm using my set from Deep Deep Light. We have Mirabella, Rosehip, Mayan, Green Woodpecker, this is Partridge, and we also have Bramble Jam. Now if you don't have these colours, like I said, use the nearest that you have within your own set, and if you are struggling to match the same colours as me, let me know in the comments below and I will help you match them based on what you have within your own set. So there's no obligation at all to go out and buy these colours, but I do have a discount code, which again, I will link in the description box. You can have a look um, at your leisure. So to start with, with this lovely juicy orange, we are working wet in wet. I'm using a textured paper which takes wet in wet really, really well because it means that it spreads out that paint onto the paper and it kind of absorbs it rather like a blotting paper. So I'm using a colour called Green Woodpecker here for my first wash on the leaves here. Now this is a kind of greeny yellowy tone and it is granulating. Granulating colours are brilliant when you're working wet in wet because it means they separate out on the paper and it gives you this kind of textured look. I'm using my number eight size brush for this, dropping in that other pigment while the green colour is still wet. This colour that you can see me using is called Partridge. It's a rather magical colour that starts out this kind of greeny, um, almost brown tone, and it dries down into a cooler colour. It's a very unusual granulating tone and I absolutely love using it. Using my number eight brush, you can see me lifting out some colour there and I'm dropping in Bramble Jam on the base because I want these leaves to have a really watercolour look. This wet and wet technique that I'm using here is perfect for this. I'm not strictly going to my reference photograph that you see on your screen because I feel sometimes we need to use a little bit of artistic license and do what we feel feels right. You can see me here just dropping in a little bit more Bramble Jam which is a beautiful granulating blue and kind of purpley tone um, but there are loads of alternatives that you can use that I'm sure that you have within your own kit. Doing the same to this leaf here again dropping in Green Woodpecker which is that gorgeous green tone with flecks of yellow and adding a um, another layer here as you can see me doing just dropping in more pigment. Now when you're working wet and wet it's worth noting that when you apply your water to your paper just give it a minute or two to sink in. I noticed that as, as I was applying some of the colour here that I was a little bit impatient and you can see it kind of floating on the surface of the paper. The trick with wet and wet is to just drop that pigment in at the right moment and the only way that you can get used to this is by practicing. There isn't any right or wrong way to do it but you'll get the feel of it as you keep practicing this technique. Wet and wet is a brilliant way to start painting if you're new to watercolour and also really good if you're having if you've got kind of larger areas to work on and you want your paint to kind of spread out a little bit um, a little bit even more evenly uh, it's also good if you're new simply because with that barrier of water underneath your pigment it means you've got a little bit of leeway to move your paint around you can see how I'm using the tip of my number eight brush here to drop in more of that gorgeous partridge colour that starts off one colour and then changes magically to another which I absolutely adore if you are enjoying this video, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel where every week I provide you with new content. So if this is something that appeals to you, do hit subscribe and that little bell on the side there so that you won't miss out new content when I upload. If you are enjoying this, could I ask you to hit the like button? It really does help to support me and help my channel grow. 
Now you have to be patient with watercolour and let it dry before you apply the next layer. Um, but before I do anything else, I'm using my blender brush. Now this is a stubby little brush with a really curved edge and I can use this to get rid of any areas that I might have made, to lift out any more colour that I feel is necessary and also to blend the colours together when they're dry. Let's now focus on painting the orange. I'm mixing Mirabella, which is a gorgeous yellow colour, Rosehip, which is my beautiful orange, and Mayan, which is my gorgeous red. There's nothing stopping you from using something like a cadmium yellow, translucent orange, and uh, any red tone that you have, like a Windsor red, for example, would work just as well as an alternative. Once again, I'm applying the water just where I want to drop that pigment and adding Mirabella to start with. By placing this yellow tone underneath, it gives the orange um, more depth of colour. So you can see from the photograph that there's a hint of yellow at the top. But I wanted to just add this first, letting it blur naturally into that water. This is the joy of wet and wet. You can see how it does the work for you by making that paint spread around like this. Now earlier on I mentioned that you can join my Patreon for free to have that lovely digital version delivered directly to your inbox so that it will save you scrolling to the end of this video to get that reference photograph. If that is something that appeals to you and you want that free outline, join us on Patreon and I will link it below. But I have to tell you that we also have tutorials on Patreon that you simply won't find here on YouTube. They are full length tutorials, usually in several parts, and they are strictly botanical paintings. So if you want to level up on your botanical painting and you want to support my channel, let's take a little look at what you get. When you join Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours, from vibrant blooms to fine detail, and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level, so if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button which I will link in the description. You can join Patreon and leave at any time and as I said, um, we do ad free content there so you won't get those pesky ads running on the tutorials and we'd love to see you there because it's a way that you can support my channel if you want to and a great way to learn. We also have that mentorship level of course which you can have one-on-one -on -one feedback from me, Zoom calls once a month and it really is a great way to help you progress with your watercolour painting if that's uh, something that you want to do. I will link it in the description box underneath um, and we'd love to see you there. We also have our own private Facebook group so that you can post up your finished paintings. You can see I'm dropping in these two colours here, the rose hip and the Mayan that I mixed up. Um, the different puddles that you see on my palette there are a more watered down version and a thicker version so that I'm just varying. Now you can see here what I meant by the pooling. I was a little impatient here and you can see how that uh, pigment is kind of gloss, glossy on the paper there. You want it to be a little bit more, um, you want to give it a minute or two to sink into that paper. So just be patient. I'm the most impatient person in the world so I, I tend to rush things a little bit but you want to just give it a minute or two to sink in. You can use your brush like I'm doing here to lift out for a little bit of texture but again let it dry and go in with your next layer because of course we already know that watercolour is about building up those layers slowly and carefully. This time working wet on dry, using that Mayan red colour to add a little bit more dimension and a little bit more of a darker value to the base of the orange as you can see. I'm taking the watercolour paint right to the end of that painting and then varying the colour with a little bit of that beautiful rosehip yet uh, orange colour and once I've applied the colour I will clean my brush, pat it dry and add a little bit of texture as you can see me doing here. 
At the moment, the watercolour paper is slightly damp at the top, which gives it that blurred look when I'm dropping in that pigment, as you can see here. It's not a solid colour, it's just doing the work for you by just placing that paint onto the damp paper. The brushes I'm using, by the way, are from Craftamo. They are from a collaboration that I did with Craftamo at the back end of 2023. And of course, um, I'm delighted to announce that we are going to be doing a second run. And they're going to be launching, I think, at the end of April this year. Um, if you want to register your interest, do click the link in the description box and you'll be notified when we upload, when we're ready to launch our second release um, of these brushes. You asked me to uh, create a second set, so that's exactly what we've done. You all absolutely love them which makes me super proud and super happy because I work so hard to create these brushes for you um, based on what I would consider to be a, a good brush for botanical painting and something that I wanted to use myself so I take great pride in these and like I said I will link them in the description box underneath so that you can click through and be notified. Once again everything's dry so once again we can start to build up our layers this time working wet on dry but once again but I'm now using my um, that little blender brush that I showed you before to lift out a little bit of colour here where I went into the area that I didn't intend to and I'm also using it down just to lift out some texture on the on the orange like that but notice how this brush has a really curved edge which is great for getting in those corners. I'm mixing rosehip which is that orange colour again along with bramble Jam, Sorry, along with partridge and also a little bit of that green woodpecker. Yes, I'm using my number two brush. This is um, wet on dry, applying it to the areas that you can see me here, uh, see me doing here. And of course, because the brush is quite small, um, we have full control of where we put it. Because this time I work in wet on dry, it means that we apply the watercolour paint directly onto that watercolour paper given us that full control that we need. But I am charging that paint up with another colour. As you can see there, I was dropping in partridge and adding a tiny bit of that pigment to the side. Again, mixing partridge, notice that uh, how it starts off with that brown colour, which I absolutely love. And I'm going in with my number eight brush, adding another layer of that beautiful green woodpecker over the layer of paint that I've already applied. Just leaving a little gap at the base and taking it onto the stem as it hits the stalk. With this number eight brush, I can still do finer detail because it has a fine tip. And you can see me here just adding a little bit of definition to some of the leaves. I'm very aware that these leaves are not as they are in the photograph because I wanted to just play around with the paint a little bit and give them a little bit more of an arty feel. You can, of course, work to the photograph if you want to. There's nothing to stop you from making this your own painting. Uh, just so that you know, we do have our own private Facebook group with the same name, The Wonders of Watercolour. Um, we've been growing our Facebook group for a few years now. We have a fantastic community there. We are what I consider to be one of the best Facebook groups around. Me and my team work very, very hard to keep the group safe. And um, we love to see your finished works from the Wonders of Watercolour. And we do have a lot of our original um, older photographs and references, line drawings over there as well. So you're welcome to join us there. And I will link it in the description box with all the other information that you need. And you can paint, you can post up your finished paintings from the Wonders of Watercolour there and have feedback from me, my community, and our fantastic team who are always on hand to help you and to recommend any uh, colours that you may not have if you're struggling with matching up your colours. Once again we're working wet in wet and applying this colour as you can see dropping in that gorgeous green colour and I'm just carrying on working around the, the orange bit by bit. You can see how I'm using that pigment to push it into the outside edge of the pencil to make sure that my edges are nice and sharp and clean against that gorgeous white paper. Dropping in that uh, bramble jam which is that gorgeous blue that dark blue color and it kind of merges into that damp paint using my number eight brush I'm applying a tiny bit of detail on the stalk As I said earlier on, just to let you know, the palette that I'm using today are from Ray's Blooms set um, that I collaborated with Deep Deep Light to create these colours that I consider to be 
absolutely beautiful for botanical painting and we do have a discount code that I will link in the description box underneath this video and you can use that 10% code for any paints that you buy uh, through Deep Deep Light who are an incredible small business run by two beautiful Latvian ladies and I take great pleasure in working with these two gorgeous souls that really really work hard to create these gorgeous handmade watercolours. Going back to the brushes that I'm using here, you can see that I've got this, um, my blender brush, which is a multi-use brush that I'm using to lift out some paint here, as well as push the colour into the outside edge with my, uh, just using the tip of it there as you can see. It also gets rid of any hard edges that you get with watercolour when it dries, and you can use it just damp to eradicate those hard edges. This is my number four brush for my set. Now, although it's a larger size brush, it does have a finer point. I'm mixing partridge here with a tiny bit of bramble jam to create a thicker mix this time, along with the other colors that you can see there, which are rosehip and the bramble jam. You notice how I'm applying this paint wet on dry. I've zoomed in really close for you to see here what I'm doing. The tip of this brush is phenomenal. You can get right into the corners and working around these finer details as you can see me doing here. The great thing I love about this brush is it's got plenty of clout because you've got your really, really fine tip, but you've also got some body to the brush, which means that you can load it with paint without having to go back. There's nothing worse than applying a finer line or detail with a brush that's got two or three hairs. I find that you don't get the control with that, which is why I've designed this brush as part of my set. And you can see how I'm using it here with that gorgeous fine tip to get into the fine detail work in wet on dry. At this point, I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this video, listening to some soothing music, which I know you all enjoy so much. So I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this in peace. Remember, I will link all of the materials that I'm using, along with my other social media platforms in the description box underneath. And don't forget the discount codes and all the materials will be linked in the description underneath. Could I ask you once again to like this video if you've enjoyed it? I'd really appreciate your support and if you subscribe and hit that bell like I said you'll be notified and you won't miss out on new free content every single week I'm going to say now thank you so much for watching stay until the end so that you see your finished painting as well as have the line drawing and the um, the reference photograph there thank you so much for watching it's been a pleasure being here for you and I'll see you soon Bye.